Motivational Summaries presents to you the Summary of Conscious Luck. 8 Secrets to Intentionally Change Your Fortune, written by Gay Hendricks and Carol Klein. Secret number 1 of 8. Commit to being a VLP. Very lucky person. You can change your luck for the better, just by making a conscious decision to being luckier in the future. It's up to you to take the first step and change your luck. If you want to be luckier, you can. The power rests in your own mind and is entirely in your own hands. To start changing your luck for the better, take the pledge. Write this down on a piece of paper. I, insert your name, make a sincere and genuine commitment to being and acting lucky, today and forever. Signed, your name and the date. Write this pledge once with your dominant hand and then switch to your non-dominant hand and write it out again. Then repeat that with both hands. This will embed the pledge into both sides of your brain. You may be tempted to discount the power of this pledge, but the reality is you have created the life you have now by the power of the commitments you previously made, both conscious and unconscious. Therefore, if you have created your life one way, you can change and steer it in another direction by making a different set of commitments. Once you make new commitments, it's powerful to then go public with those commitments. When you say to someone you know, I've made a personal commitment to being lucky, things change. How they respond really won't matter, but making that commitment public calls your shots. It's a statement of intent you can then hustle to make come true. By the way, pledging to become lucky in life and in your career won't be a burden. It will be fun. Having good luck is inspirational and aspirational. You can change your life if you let it. So speak about your newfound commitment with enthusiasm. Gay Hendricks said, quote, The simplest way to create abundance on all levels is by changing your luck. The knowledge that you can change your luck consciously is one of the most valuable assets you have. End quote. If you study the lives of any successful people, you'll often be struck by how many lucky breaks they got. The easiest way for you to invite more wealth or pretty much more of anything good is to get luckier. Committing to have more good luck can be something of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Chris Predis, author, said, quote, People who believe they have bad luck create bad luck. Those who believe they are very fortunate that the world is a generous place filled with trustworthy people live in exactly that kind of world. End quote. R. A. Salvatore author, said, quote, is simply the advantage a true warrior gains in executing the correct course of action. End quote. Gay Hendricks said, quote, to successfully harness the winds of luck, you must raise your sail by taking bold actions or finding ways to give to others and keep raising it over and over again. End quote. This is a summary of conscious luck. Secret number two of eight. Release your personal barriers. To become luckier, you've got to break the barriers of the past. Have the mindset, that was then. This is now. Dissolve your personal barriers and give yourself permission to be lucky. Do you feel somewhere in the back of your mind that you're unlucky and that you've somehow been cursed with bad luck? It's time to dissolve those barriers if you do. Here's how you do that. 1. Take a blank piece of paper and draw a timeline. Head this up. My luck timeline. 2. Mark on your timeline your major life and career events, such as when you were in elementary school, high school, college, when you graduated, when you started your first job, etc. Take a blank piece of paper and draw a timeline. Head this up. My luck timeline. Mark on your timeline your major life and career events such as when you were in elementary school, high school, college, when you graduated, when you started your first job, etc. Also, draw a couple of lines at the bottom of the page. Mark one line with my parents, the other, my grandparents. Next, close your eyes and try to tune in to your sense of somehow being unlucky. With one of your fingers, point to the place on your timeline when you were first aware of being unlucky. When specifically did you first notice that? Now. Look at your parents' and grandparents' timelines. 
If your parents felt unlucky somehow, point to that line with one finger. If one of your grandparents felt unlucky, point to that line. You may have picked up on their mindset unconsciously. Gay Hendricks said, quote, Now, I'd like you to do something incredibly important for changing your luck. Look at the original timeline again. Point to a place on it that corres- point to a place on it that corresponds to when you felt unlucky. Point with your finger. Now, while pointing at the timeline, say the following phrase out loud. That was then. And then touch your chest with the same finger as you say, this is now. You may feel resistance to doing this. Do this part of the exercise at least 10 times. Say, that was then, as you point at the timeline. Then touch your chest as you say, this is now. It's important that you physically touch your chest when you say, this is now. Make sure you say it out loud. I suggest 10 times, but you can do it dozens of times if it feels right to you to do so. End quote. You might think this is dumb or this will never work, but put those feelings aside. Take a deep breath and let the negative thought go. Doing this will fully activate your brain and your personality to move forward with a clean slate rather than being stuck in the past. Note that you should do the same thing if you feel your parents or grandparents were unlucky. Point to those lines and say, that was then. And then tap your chest and say, this is now. Do that at least 10 times, and you'll start to feel the power of releasing your limiting beliefs. A professional psychologist would have you come back and do the same exercise from scratch at least once a day for several days to get the new mindset embedded into your mind. You can do the same. Repeat this exercise once a day until you feel like you believe your luck has changed for the better. Gay Hendricks said, quote, When we commit to change things in our lives, those forces that are comfortable with the way things are act strongly and swiftly to discourage us from our newly intended goals. This can come from inside, self-sabotage from fear of success, upper limits issues, or simply fear of change. When we make a conscious effort to change, everything standing in the way of change is activated. We must prepare ourselves for this onslaught and position ourselves properly, or like a big wave, it will wipe us out. This releasing process gets easier and easier as you continue, and I promise you, any discomfort you feel along the way will be a small price to pay for the rising tide of good luck you'll experience as a result. End quote. The good thing about making a deliberate choice to change your luck is from this point on, you'll start acting and thinking differently. Rather than being timid and afraid, you'll take a bold step forward whenever a new opportunity presents itself. If you change your old habits of thinking, you create the opportunity for being lucky to become your default position. It's kind of like generating your own self-fulfilling prophecy or positive feedback cycle. Mark Benedict, author of The Method of Selling, said, quote, You can create your own luck just like a cloud can create its own rain. You create your own luck by the way you act, think, feel, and talk. If these ingredients you're using to create your luck are distorted, then what will follow is bad luck all the way, like a thunderstorm. But if you're especially careful to watch how you think, then the sweet aroma of good luck will rain upon you almost everywhere you go. End quote. If you find yourself slipping back into your old habitual way of thinking, that's okay. Remind yourself, Rome wasn't built in a day. Creating new neural pathways for your thoughts is hard work. So just recommit and move on. Promise that you'll commit to being lucky in the future and go on. Gay Hendricks said, quote, Old mental patterns become a stubborn, tenacious default position that we slip back into quickly if we're not paying attention. To get a consistent flow of good luck in your life, make a point of noticing how often you revert to the old concept of yourself as unlucky. When you notice that your thoughts have gravitated back to the old I'm not lucky pattern, gently direct your mind back to your new commitment. I, blank, make a sincere commitment to being lucky, now and forever. The trick to making this shift is to be as gentle and accepting as you possibly can. Most people feel the need to stop and beat themselves up when they notice some old, unwanted habit taking over. Nobody has ever beaten himself or herself to genuine wisdom. So don't waste your time trying. If you do catch yourself beating yourself up, try not to waste more time beating yourself up for beating yourself up. Just notice what you're doing 
and make the gentle shift back to your new commitment. Let the old thoughts go and choose luck once again. End quote. This is a summary of conscious luck. This is a summary of conscious luck. Secret number three of eight. Become a magnet for abundance. As counterintuitive as it may sound, the best way to pull more good luck into your life is to transform any shame you have felt in the past into an attractor of good luck. Put the power of your own shame machinery to work for you as a luck magnet. The idea of using something that has embarrassed you in the past as an attractor field for better luck in the future sounds crazy. But it's not. If you can throw light on ideas that are dark to you, not only will you feel better, but you'll soon find luck just seems to flow to you from all directions as if on autopilot. What do I already have inside me that I can use as a larger attractor field for good luck? Just like limiting beliefs, shame can form a personal barrier to better luck. Note that shame is different from guilt. Shame is feeling bad about who you are. Guilt is feeling bad about something you've done. Guilt can be alleviated by apologizing, making amends, and committing to do better. Shame is heavy, suffocating, and miserable. Nobody is born with shame. It's always instilled in people. Gay Hendricks said, quote, Whatever the cause, here's the bottom line. There is no organic shame built into you. There's no muscle or nerve that science can point to and say, these are the shame muscles and nerves. You were trained to feel shame, and that feeling gets lodged in the muscles and nerves of your body. Then, like a low-grade fever, shame zaps your luck and your energy for life, unless you learn how to deal with it effectively. It's time to take the first step. End quote. Declaring war on shame won't work. It will only make it become more powerful. To liberate yourself from the grip of shame and transform it into a luck attraction field, the professional psychology process is start by closing your eyes, taking a few deep breaths, and trying to tune into your body. Identify the sensations you feel and your weight on the chair you're sitting on. As you relax, try to take better note of your feelings of shame. Take another deep breath and focus on where you feel shame. Some people feel it when they were struck physically as a child. Others feel it in the pit of their stomach. Some people feel shame in their face or another part of their anatomy. Clarify where, exactly, you are experiencing shame. Next, take three deep breaths, about 15 to 20 seconds, and notice if you feel any kind of tingling or other sensation. As you do that, you may feel those reminders of shame dissipate. Replace shame with feelings of open spaces. Now imagine those open spaces filling with light. As you let light pour into where shame previously existed, you should feel lighter and better. Take a few minutes to savor that light. Let light pour into those open spaces as if clear, sparkling water was displacing muddy water in a glass. Next, infuse your physical being with the opposite of shame, self-love. To do this, visualize someone you love deeply. Your spouse, a child, your parents, a friend, or even a pet. Take the love you feel for this individual and let it expand until it fills your internal spaces warmly and completely. Take another deep breath and let those feelings saturate you. Finally, when you feel good, take a few deep breaths and while keeping your eyes closed, start moving your body. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Do a gentle neck roll. Stretch out your arms and legs. Then slowly open your eyes and transition back to normal activity. Gay Hendricks said, quote, You were once rich in shame. It was like an inheritance. It came to you spontaneously and absolutely free of charge. Shame once lit up areas of your body, and now those areas are being illuminated with something new and better. You've heard the saying, like attracts like. Now, feel the truth of that saying in your body. A vast field of richness has opened up inside you, and this inner richness attracts outer richness in the form of abundant money, health, purpose, and love. Breathe in this new richness, accept it, and let it make its home in your body. End quote. 
If you've ever watched an orchestra warming up, they have an oboe player sound a tone, and the rest of the orchestra tunes to that note. Similarly, you've just sounded a tone of good luck inside your physical body, and you've allowed your mind and your nerve endings to tune to that new note. You should feel differently, and you've sent positive energy out into the universe. All of this lays a good foundation for luck and prosperity. Gay Hendricks said, quote, Here's the truth of the matter. You have the power to make up new rules for your life, provided those rules do not conflict with existing laws of the universe. There is no law in the universe that condemns you to feeling shame all of your life. I promise you that. There is no law that says you cannot be lucky. This is your time to choose the rules for your relationship with luck. Based on conscious luck secrets you've learned so far, and the ones still to come, I invite you to make up a new rule that says, I attract and enjoy wonderful luck. I urge you to choose good fortune as the governing rule of your universe. Choose now. And so it is. End quote. Jessica Moore, a therapist and coach, said, quote, Our shame becomes toxic when we internalize messages from others that don't serve our health and well-being. End quote. This is a summary of conscious luck. Secret number four of eight. Have luck-worthy goals. Luck has a way of chasing worthy goals. If you want to attract more luck into your life or career, go after some big and audacious goals. Ask yourself this question. If I were totally and completely lucky, what would I be doing now that I am not doing? Or what would I have that I don't have right now? The great thing is, you are the only person who decides what your goals should be. No one else can do this for you. Therefore, when you set goals, go big. Choose goals that are deeply meaningful to you, that will allow you to do what you love, and that will be hugely beneficial to you and the world at large. Those are the kinds of goals that are luckworthy. To reiterate, luckworthy goals are deeply meaningful to you. They encapsulate what you really want in life, as opposed to what others say you should be doing. Be careful you don't just set a goal to make more money or have time freedom. You have to frame your goals more specifically. I want to make more money so I will have more resources to build a house for my parents. Luckworthy goals have to light you up. They fill you with energy because you get to do more of what you absolutely love. Luckworthy goals have to align with the universe. They need to benefit you and other people. You want the universe to wink at you because you're a force for doing great things that benefit everyone. Gay Hendricks said, quote, You don't have to be like Mother Teresa or join the Peace Corps to enlist the luck-attracting quality of altruism. Simply identify and focus on the altruistic aspects of your goals, whatever your goals may be. For example, let's say one of your goals is to purchase a Tesla. If you focus exclusively on how having a Tesla will benefit you, how snazzy you'll look behind the wheel of such a beautifully designed car, how you won't ever have to go to a gas station again, the big tax credit you'll receive, and so on, it's not as empowering or luck-attracting as focusing on how having a Tesla will also benefit others. Reducing carbon emissions, having a safer car for your family, modeling action in line with your convictions to your children and your community, and so forth. So, working towards something for yourself, combined with the intention to contribute to others, enhances your ability, spiritually, emotionally, and physically, to achieve your goal. It also places you in the fast lane, where luck is concerned. End quote. A good way to check your goals are luck-worthy is to use this meditation exercise. Start by writing down your three biggest goals on a piece of paper, and then reviewing what you wrote for a few minutes. Sit comfortably in a place where you won't be disturbed. Close your eyes and take three deep, slow breaths. Focus on your breathing. Now, in your mind, say your first goal. Let the words drop into the stillness of your inner world, kind of like dropping a stone into a perfectly still swimming pool. Feel the vibrations of your thoughts resonate throughout your body. As you do that, do you now feel an expansion or a contraction in your chest? Or put it another way, do you feel like laughing or crying? If you feel energized by the goal, Go to the next goal on your list. If the goal does not light you up, keep reworking it until you feel great about it. 
Repeat this process for every goal on your list. Make sure you write down the version of your goals that make you feel great. Go back through your goals using the same process and prioritize them. Once you go through this process, you then have identified the goal that is the most expanding or the most energizing for you. Make that goal a priority in your life. No matter how busy you are, commit to completing one item each day, which brings you closer to that goal. Gay Hendricks and Carol Klein said, quote, As simple as this meditation seems, it's a potent tool for identifying how you truly feel about your goals. When your heart and mind are united in support of your goals, luck can't help but assist you. When your goals line up with this compassionate quality of the universe, you become eligible for a universal quid pro quo, a you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours arrangement, in which all sorts of cosmic coincidences and unexpected support show up. We call this phenomenon the universe winking at us. End quote. Daniel Poneman, a professional sports agent, said, quote, For as long as I can remember, I've loved basketball. At 14, I even started my own basketball blog, where I posted my analysis of the performance of all the high school players in the Chicago area. Within two years, there were hundreds of college basketball coaches from all over the country reading my blog and asking me questions about players they were looking to recruit. That got me thinking, what if I could help young athletes? who are never going to be pros and might not have the opportunity to go to college, get basketball scholarships. To do this, I organized showcases where the coaches from colleges could come and see their lesser-recognized players play. My idea worked. As a result of those showcases, hundreds of kids, mostly inner city, went to colleges around the country. What's more, many of those graduates have returned to their communities as coaches, teachers, and mentors, which is really needed. I was introduced to one of the country's richest investors. He'd heard about my nonprofit work and wanted to support me. First, he invested in a documentary some friends and I were making about Chicago basketball players, titled Shot in the Dark, and later he invested the money for me to start my own agency. Shot in the Dark was a great success, and today my agency is thriving. I know I was lucky, but I also believe that when you set out to help people, not expecting anything in return, somehow it comes full circle. End quote. This is a summary of conscious luck. Secret number five of eight. Take consistent, bold action. One of the best ways to get luckier is to be taking daily action on your goals. The more you do, the more opportunities you create for luck to visit you. Get busy and stay busy to spark a lucky streak. There are several ways you can spark a lucky streak in your life or career. 1. Mix things up a little by doing something you've never done before. Even something as simple as going to a different store for your groceries or eating at an unfamiliar restaurant can increase your opportunities for luck. Being exposed to new experiences, different people, and novel ways of doing things can be refreshing and energizing. It increases your chances of being lucky. You also become more open to out of the box ideas which is good. Gay Hendricks said, quote, I realized I'd been brushing my teeth with my right hand for my entire life, so I decided to switch hands and brush with my left for a month. I wondered what would happen if I changed this one little thing. It was amazing how much it woke me up. Plus, I found a real joy in the act of consciously brushing my teeth rather than automatically going through the motions while thinking of something else. It was very helpful in creating a more mindful experience. Another thing I did was try to take a different route to the office each day. There was one obvious way to go, but whenever possible, I'd drive around just another way or take an alternate street and backtrack. I just kept jiggling with my reality. I found it valuable for coming to my day in an awakened state. I was more alert and open and noticed more of what was going on around me. End quote. Two, say yes to whatever life throws your way. Be willing to go with the flow and end up in different places. A little serendipity is a great thing. You never know what magic can happen if you agree to go with whatever comes your way. Focus is helpful, but you could also be open to an adventure or two. Three, do what scares you. Leave your comfort zone and go for it. Not only will this energize you, but it will also open up new opportunities for luck to come through for you. Take counsel of your fears and then confront them head on. Four, Give to others 
without any expectation of receiving anything in return. You can jumpstart good fortune by dedicating time to serving other people. Sometimes the results of doing this can be dramatic. Chelly Campbell, an author, said, quote, What happens when I do this seems almost magical. As I help others, I help myself. When I make someone else happy, I become happy. My day brightens as I brighten someone else's day. And then the dam breaks. Whatever was holding me back disappears. Referrals start calling me out of the blue. People call whom I've never met, referred by people I've never met. Money and good start flowing to me again. End quote. Actor Matt Damon's character, Benjamin Mee, in the film We Bought a Zoo, said, quote, Sometimes all you need is 20 seconds of insane courage. Just literally 20 seconds of embarrassing bravery. And I promise you something great will come of it. End quote. A Latin proverb says, quote, Fortune favors the bold. End quote. Jimmy Carter said, quote, Go out on a limb. That's where the fruit is. End quote. Walter Matthews, an author, said, quote, Put P before the word luck, and you have the password to the attainment of all your desires. End quote. This is a summary of conscious luck. Secret number six of eight. Find your lucky tribe. To change your luck, stop hanging around with unlucky people. Spend more time working alongside lucky people. This will significantly boost your ability to be lucky in the future. The idea of not hanging around unlucky people makes sense, but how do you do that? Well, first off, you have to stop spending your time with people who unconsciously engage you in a we're unlucky conspiracy. Gay Hendricks said, quote, A major characteristic of a bad luck conspiracy is that its members tell victim stories to each other. A victim story is one that portrays the storyteller as the victim and someone else as the perpetrator. A longtime bartender told us that what he'd learned from all those years behind the bar is that people love to complain about their bad luck. Think of those folks who like to drown their troubles and tell their tales of woe to anyone who'll listen. This is just one common example of a bad luck conspiracy. There are many others. End quote. The first step in avoiding unlucky people is to make sure you don't have a bad news mentality yourself. For example, Gay Hendricks was complaining to his wife that he had to write a check to the IRS for $285,000. In the midst of his anti-IRS rant, his wife said, shouldn't we be happy that we made so much money that we have to pay $285,000 in tax? Gay Hendricks suddenly realized he liked that version of the story better, and that by changing to his wife's viewpoint, he felt much better about life. Gay Hendricks said, quote, Instead of griping about how the government was going to spend the money, Katie and I put our hands on the check and blessed it to its highest uses. That wasn't the end of the matter, though. I still had some work to do to rid myself of the tendency to think like a victim. It was difficult work, too, because it involved kicking the addiction to relationships based on mutual victimhood. You may find it useful to apply the remedy I used. I went through my address book with one question in mind. Do I ever swap victim stories with this person? That we were victims of one thing or the other? The government, the past, ex-spouses, our families of origin, or the vagaries of the weather? Our mutual victimhood was the currency we exchanged and the glue that held the relationship in place. We recommend you try this technique too. I was amazed and rattled to discover several people in my acquaintance who fit this category. A couple were family members, others were friends, but they all had that one quality in common. They would agree with me, and I with them, that we were victims of one thing or the other. The government, the past, ex-spouses, our families of origin, or the vagaries of the weather. Our mutual victimhood was the currency we exchanged and the glue that held the relationship in place. End quote. You'll be amazed at what a difference it makes to hang out with people who are upbeat and positive, rather than victims. You want to do all you can to grow and develop some new friendships with go-getters. They will take you along for the ride, solely on the strength of their enthusiasm and mindset. To identify those who can make your own lucky tribe, watch for these telltale signs. Look for people that you breathe easily around, rather than those who are on edge and likely to be easily offended by what you say. 
Look for people who make your eyes light up when you're around them. You can feed off of their positive vibes. Look for friends and associates that don't give you a bad feeling in your gut. Instead, hang around with people who lift and energize you. Try enrolling in some personal development programs. You'll find those are often populated by people who are lucky and influential. Soak in everything they contribute. Use whatever mastermind or community support groups are available in your local community. Try and find a mentor or an accountability partner who will push you to be more successful. Offer to mentor up-and-comers who are just starting on the path you've already gone down. Immerse yourself in great books and videos. Soak up the wisdom literature and help others draw on that source of material as well. Find virtual lucky tribes as well. Take advantage of the global village the internet provides to link up with people who will lift and inspire you. It's amazing what an email from someone you really like can do to your day. Look for people who have in the trenches real world experience you can draw upon. Rumi, a Persian poet and mystic, said, quote, Set your life on fire. Seek those who fan your flames. End quote. Will Smith, the actor, said, quote, Don't be hanging with jokers that don't help you shine. The prerequisite for spending time with any person is that they nourish and inspire you. There's been very few times in my life when I looked left or looked right and didn't find a person who believed and supported me. There's always been a person beside me fanning my flames. Look at your five last text messages. Are those people feeding your flames or dousing your fire? The people that you spend time with are going to make or break your dreams. Not everybody deserves to be around you. You gotta defend your light with your life. End quote. Mark Ambrose, an author, said, quote, Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. End quote. Amanda Rusa, an author, said, quote, Don't sleepwalk through your social circles. Be intentional about how you spend your time and who you spend it with. You're ultimately responsible for shaping the environment that will shape you. End quote. Nikki Rowe, an author, said, quote, Your tribe will get you through the tough days and give you something to laugh about on the ride. End quote. Oprah Winfrey said, quote, Surround yourself with those who only lift you higher. End quote. This is a summary of Conscious Luck. Secret number seven of eight. Learn the right place and time. A big part of luck is to be at the right place at the right time. But that's not random. You have control over this. Do all you can to tune into your own internal GPS, to listen to your intuition, and to stay true to your values, your passions, and your priorities. Gay Hendricks and Carol Klein said, quote, Luck research shows that lucky people are far more likely than unlucky people to use inner guidance to make decisions about their relationships, careers, and finances. Unlucky people, on the other hand, are prone to overthinking and waffling, afraid to make mistakes, and unwilling to trust themselves. Learning to function from your center is a crucial luck skill to practice. This includes moving your body at a rate that's in harmony with your core listening to your intuition, and being true to your values, passions, and priorities. End quote. To operate at the speed of luck, you have to go at a pace which allows you to be present in both mind and body. You have to be aware of everything and moving at a pace which gives you a sense of grounded ease. Being stressed takes you away from the sweet spot almost instantaneously. When you study successful overachievers like Warren Buffett, Albert Einstein, Winston Churchill, You'll notice just how much they value and rely on their intuition. Everyone has intuition, but most people tend to overrule it. If you can listen more to your intuition, you may well find that it boosts your luck significantly. Gay Hendricks said, quote, Developing your intuition is an uncovering process. When you let go of relying exclusively on logic or intellect, you operate in a zone that seems magical and mystical, but is actually much more predictable than that. All of us are factory equipped with incredible sensing tools, but we're not paying attention to the signals we receive. And of the sensory data that we do take in, our conscious minds have learned to filter out 99.9% .9 of it because all of that information 
isn't useful or necessary for immediate physical survival. To access our intuition, we need to stop relying on what we're used to perceiving and tap into the subtle, sensory discernment and inner knowledge that's there at our disposal, even if we don't always understand it. End quote. Heeding your inner hunches will give you greater control of your luck, as will being true to yourself. When you have integrity to do what you know to be right, you'll also find your luck improves. Ray Kroc, founder of McDonald's, said, quote, The two most important requirements for major success are, first, being in the right place at the right time, and second, doing something about it. End quote. Gay Hendricks said, quote, Heeding your hunches and gut feelings requires courage and commitment and practice. But if you want to be in greater control of your own luck, it's enormously useful. A transformative alchemy, greater than the sum of its parts, happens when you embrace your body's natural pace, listen to your inner knowing, and are true to the promptings of your deepest self. When you stop trying to be at the right place at the right time and instead trust your inner GPS, you can be sure you'll end up in a lucky spot. End quote. Gay Hendricks said, quote, We think luck comes from outside of us and is bestowed on us by chance. If you're lucky, you're lucky, and if you're not, you're not. We're wrong. Though there will always be a random component to luck, both good and bad, a great deal of your luck can be changed, and quickly, with a little conscious attention on your part. End quote. This is a summary of conscious luck. Secret number eight of eight. Practice radical gratitude. The more grateful you are, the greater your luck will become. If you want to improve your luck, find something to appreciate and be grateful for in every situation. Melody Beattie, an author, said, quote, Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. End quote. Feeling lucky and being grateful are very closely related. When you're experiencing intense gratitude, it's just natural that you'll also be feeling lucky. The two go hand in hand and feed off of each other. To enhance your luck, be grateful for everything you have. John Quincy Adams said, quote, Gratitude, warm, sincere, intense, when it takes possession of the bosom, fills the soul to overflowing and scarce leaves the room for any other sentiment or thought. End quote. Admittedly, it's hard to feel grateful in times of challenge or distress. Humans have a tendency to notice a small black mark on a canvas rather than the vast expanse of unmarred space surrounding it. However, if you can put that tendency aside and be thankful for what you have, you'll find your luck will be enhanced. Note also, there's a difference between being lucky and feeling lucky. If you ask someone if they feel lucky, most people will say no. However, if you stand back and look from the outside, you'd more likely conclude those people are quite lucky. Luck and how you feel about it is highly subjective. Feeling lucky is entirely within your control. Similarly, Although the term appreciation and gratitude are often used interchangeably, they're not the same thing. Gratitude is something you feel, whereas appreciation is something you show. Appreciation comes in two general types. 1. Internal appreciation, where you can look at something and appreciate its qualities. This is what you feel looking at a sunset or a great piece of art. 2. External appreciation, where you thank someone for something they did, or even just for who they are. Appreciation is the gateway to feeling grateful, and the more appreciation you have, the more lucky breaks will come your way. Appreciation also makes you more attractive, which is another great luck-generating effect. Margaret Cousins, an American journalist, said, quote, Appreciation can make a day, even change a life. Your willingness to put it all into words is all that is necessary. End quote. To really supercharge your luck, Practice radical gratitude. This means being grateful for your struggles and challenges, as well as your gifts and the people who help you. If you want to be luckier, this is an essential habit to have. 
Gay Hendricks said, quote, Practicing radical gratitude is simple. The next time something bad happens, let yourself feel whatever comes up, and then in the spirit of tremendously gentle inquiry, ask yourself, can I be grateful for this too? Remember, you're not trying to suppress or distract yourself from your pain or discomfort. There is no should or obligation to feel grateful. Just a curiosity to see what answers surface. When you invite yourself to consider the possibility that there could be something to be grateful for, you'll observe how that shifts things and changes your perspective. With the passing of time, what appears to be bad luck often leads straight to good luck. The ability to feel grateful and lucky at will is the essence of conscious luck. End quote. The first conscious luck secret was to make a commitment to be lucky. That requires you to keep trying and never give up. It demands resilience and that you continue to be grateful in the face of adversity. Lucky people don't let setbacks make a dent in their commitment to being lucky. They look for good luck in every situation and more often than not, find it. The key is to be grateful. Gay Hendricks said, quote, A buoyant spirit keeps you taking action and allows you to stay open to new opportunities that pop up around you and to the contributions and support of others. This increases the likelihood of you being lucky a thousandfold. End quote. Gay Hendricks said, quote, Use the secrets we've shared to create a new and better life, one resplendent with dazzling luck in the areas of love, wealth, health, purpose, and contribution. We know it's possible because we and many others have done it. All that's necessary is for you to take the steps yourself. End quote. Gay Hendricks and Carol Klein said, quote, You now have an operational toolkit, the eight conscious luck secrets. If you remember to implement these tools sooner, rather than later, when the universe is busily whacking you over the head with something you're stubbornly resisting learning, you will have a much smoother ride. Go now, and be lucky. Practice what you've learned, and luck will accompany you everywhere. Always. We mean it. End quote. This has been a summary of Conscious Luck, Eight Secrets to Intentionally Change Your Fortune, written by Gay Hendricks and Carol Klein.